Hey there. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Lokes, and today we are going to be reviewing another light meter, and more importantly, this light meter. Now, you've probably seen me use this meter before in a few on the road videos, and you've probably seen it on videos by my good friend Matt Marash, or even Todd Coral. This is the Rivetti Labs spot meter, and I love this thing. It is an absolutely amazing tool to add to my kit. And after um, having some fantastic results from the original hot shoe meter, it's great to finally get around to reviewing this thing. So I'm here in the beautiful historic village of St. George, and we're just gonna walk down the hill and take a few shots and uh, talk about this meter and why I like it so much. All right, so let's get walking. I guess really what's made the Ravini Lab so great is that it's pocketable. I can just throw this in a bag, throw this in my pocket and not have to worry. Sure, it does have some limitations, but you know what? It's worthwhile to have spot metering that I can just throw in my bag anytime. So you know what? I think it's time we take a closer look at this, uh, at this meter. So I'm going to throw it into the studio and we can get this close up. So as you can see, the Ravini Lab spot meter is much, much smaller than even the smallest meter that I have, the um, Gaussian Luna 6F. And its size is even increased when I add on my spot meter attachment onto the front. This is far more compact and weighs, eh, not too much more, but still it's a significant, um, weight difference between the two and um, as you can see the uh, both are equipped with about the same lanyard so around the neck it, it really doesn't matter but enough of that I've already reviewed the uh, the um, Gossen. So here is the Ravini Lab spot meter. As you can see it is a very compact light meter that allows me to natively do spot metering and really nothing else but you know what, if I want a spot meter, I want something that is just a spot meter. I don't want to have to fiddle with any extra accessories or change the mode or anything like that. So on the front, you have your main control panel and at the very top is your power button. You need to press and hold that down and then the meter itself will boot up. It does take a bit to boot, but you know what? Once you have it booted up the first time and you're using it on a consistent basis, it really doesn't take that long. This will also act as the uh, button you push for the meter reading. Just below that is your M button. This will access the menu. From the menu, you can make all the adjustments you need, including putting it into aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, changing the ISO, and setting the mode. And that includes a single, um, single reading, two reading, zone mode, and precision metering mode. And then you have your two control arrows and you can use this to adjust um, settings in the menu and also for adjusting your aperture and shutter speed when functioning. On the bottom, you have your battery housing and it takes a pair of LR44 batteries and it also includes a um, mini USB port, micro USB port. From here, you can actually connect this to um, any computer and you can upload um, new firmware for it. So that's a great little addition. Yeah. Bit of corrosion on those batteries. I might have to replace those. 
All right. Then up here on the front, you have your shroud, which is fairly chunky, which is great. And inside is actually the metering element. So it doesn't really, um, it's not really affected by any sort of off axis light sources. And it's, it is a precision one degree spot meter. Now on the back is this lens. And this is actually what houses the OLED screen, which is mounted further into the body. This is where the meter is, takes a bit to get used to because this is what you actually hold up to your eye. And instead of closing your other one, you actually keep it open and then it sort of superimposes the, uh, the uh, metering display onto your subject matter. So you, it does take a bit of practice, but you know what? Enough of me talking, let's get back into the field and I can talk a little bit more about the meter, its functionality and how it's used in the field. So I really only use this in uh, single metering mode, but you don't have to limit yourself to that. It actually has baked in a lot of features that some meters, spot meters out there don't actually have. Now it does have a standard, which is a comparison mode where you basically take two meter readings and it tells you the difference in EV between the two. If you're working with the zone system, then you'll know that that difference you want to be at least five to six stops. But even if you aren't 100% familiar with the zone system, this meter actually has the capacity to help you learn the zone system as zone system metering is baked right in. You can actually go and assign different zones from your flat black all the way to your featureless white. And if you're familiar with Nick Carver and his precision metering method, that's even in here too natively no need to drag around sheets and definitely well worth the time if you are a fan of nick carver and have taken his course on the precision metering method then yeah that's baked right in here and matt actually worked with nick to build it in but still have a bit more uh, shooting to do here in town so let's keep moving Now, the one thing I've really had to get used to is the viewing apparatus for the uh, Ravini Labs. It actually takes both your eyes to work. So unlike my Pentax Spot Meter 5, where I just held up the entire body, 
press the trigger and close the other eye, seeing everything through the lens, I actually have to use both because it's just how it works. I use my one eye to actually see, and then the metering aspects are superimposed through parallax. That's taken a lot of effort. The second thing that's taken a lot of effort is getting away from having that visible dial. I've always been so used to my uh, spot meter five and having that dial available to me to visually see everything. Now I have to keep stuff in my head and then adapt from there because Again, the way I use this is in single metering mode, where I meter for the darkest shadows and underexposed by one stop. So I usually set the aperture to where I want my shutter speed, and then I just stop it down by one. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. I've been getting better. There we have it. That's my thoughts on the Ravini. Might not be the perfect tool, but it's a good one all the same. The problems I have from it are simply minor, and I have been working with it quite a bit. I'm a lot more comfortable with the uh, meter than the first time I used it, and that was back in the uh, On the Road Elora video. If you haven't seen that, I'll try and put a um, card up at the uh, top there, and you can check that out. I like this. Um, I'm glad I bought it simply because A, it supports a friend, B, it supports new photographic technology, something that the world needs. And the best part is, is that it doesn't take up a lot of space, it's upgradable, and it supports a Canadian business. Now, I know by the time I'm um, recording this, um, the Kickstarter campaign has been a huge success and the production models are being shipped out and I've seen it in the hands of a few uh, photographers already and the results are very very positive from what I've seen. I wouldn't necessarily call this a pretty meter. I'd call it handsome if anything. So you know what I'm actually proud to wear this around my neck and be able to talk to it and tell people what this is because you know what this is pretty awesome technology. So if you are interested in buying one of these, by all means, the uh, link in the description below to the Ravini Labs, Raveni Labs uh, website where you can put in your order. Now, the global chip shortage has forced a slowdown in production and Matt is working hard to get the Kickstarter um, rewards out first, but definitely worthwhile um, if you're interested or want to get into spot metering or need, just need a little bit more precision. I know I love it with my medium format uh, cameras. I haven't used it with my large format yet. Well, that's it um, for me. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, how do you prefer to meter? Do you, do you like spot meters? Have you used any Ravini products, Raveni products before? Let me know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon. Give me a thumbs up. And as always, get out there, stay safe, make something cool happen.